Hi friends, welcome to the Modern Learning. Today we are going to discuss the lesson January night. So let's get started. Let's first talk about the author. Dhanpat Rai Srivastav, 31st July 1880 to 8th October 1936. Better known by his pen name, Munshi Premchand, was an Indian writer famous for his modern Hindustani literature. His works include more than a dozen novels, around 300 short stories and several essays. His novels describe the problems of the poor and the urban middle class. He used literature for the purpose of arousing public awareness about national and social issues. Let's talk about the story first. January Night is a short story which has been translated by David Rubin. It's from a collection of stories called The World of Frenchan. January Night was originally called Puskirat, Pus being the name of a month in Hindu solar calendar. This story depicts the poverty of farmers. Farmers work hard, yet they receive hardly any income from their produce. Janvi Night is a story of a tenant farmer named Halku and his plight against landlordship, prevalent in colonial India. Halku's fields are the center line of this plot being both his only source of income as well as cause of all his problems. Basically, he had to choose between a blanket which got along with it, the insult by the landlord for not paying the tax, or cold and chilly January nights in field to guard it. So friends, let's check out the summary of the lesson. Halko is a poor farmer who owes money to his landlord. Whatever crop Halku toils, most of the share goes to his landlord, as the interest rate on the borrowed money is so high that Halku has a feeling that he will not be able to pay off his debt on his life. The landlord is waiting outside Halku's home, demanding money. Somehow Halku has managed to save 3 rupees to buy a new blanket, since he needs a heavy blanket while guarding his field at night. Muni, his wife, is reluctant to give that hard saved money to the landlord. But Halku insists that cold nights are better than his insult. So he gives away the money to the landlord. Now, in the dark and extremely cold night, Halku reaches his field. He settles down in a cot. Under the cot is lying his dog, Jabra, which is whining since the cold waves of the night are difficult to resist. Halku is cursing his fate over landlordship and finding it difficult to survive through the cold of the night. He hides his face between his limbs, but to no avail. He keeps on tossing and turning, but finds no warmth. Forgetting all the difference between a man and an animal, he calls the dog on his god and embraces him. Halko feels a little cozy, but soon the dog senses something unusual and barks while running into the field. Halko prepares a broom of lentil crop and rakes up a heap of fallen dead leaves and makes the bonfire. With the heat coming as a relief, Halko thinks that he has beaten the gloomy dampness of the night. 
but was so much delighted that a sense of lethargy overwhelms him and he forgets to take care of the field. Soon blue bulls attack his farm and the dog barks and runs into the field. Instead of taking up the responsibility of shooing away animals, Halko tumbles into a dead sleep on the dry soil around the bonfire. When the morning arrives, Halko is awakened by his wife, who is lamenting him for his negligence in the duty. Long before Halko can realize the field has been destroyed by blue bulls, Muni is sad, but Halko is happy because he gets rid of guarding the field in wintry nights. He will pay off the debt by working as a laborer instead of a farm owner. So friends, let's check out what lesson do we learn from this story. If we are enthusiastic enough towards life, we take our loss as a new beginning and attack the future with the learning from past. That's what Halko did. As it is said, whatever happens, happens for the best. Halko is hopeful to see the best. So friends, this was all about the lesson January night. For its complete solved exercises, wait for my next video. If you like this video, just give a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. See ya.